Good morning and welcome to The Daily Connect. My name is Raymond and I'm so glad you could be a part of this time together as we go through God's Word and start the day off with the Lord, with God, and and to see what the Lord is calling us to do, uh, who we are to be. And we are at the final, final chapter, final uh, section of of the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 40. I'm excited. Uh, it, it's been a great, great journey going through Genesis and then through Exodus and uh, and seeing how the Lord has been really at the at the foundations of of all of mankind, just establishing uh, uh, all of mankind first and foremost, and then to establish this covenant. Uh, that he wants to have with his people to have this special relationship with them and we come to Exodus chapter 40 and this is where we see uh, the conclusion of this particular chapter but really the beginning of uh, just a glorious relationship that the Lord's going to have with his people at least that's the hope uh, I'm sure what what the Lord would desire um, we know how the people be uh, just uh, very uh, wayward in their ways, uh, but you know it's it's got to start somewhere. Uh, and today we're going to see what the Lord has in store for us um, and what we can learn from this. Uh, let's take a look. Let's dive right into Exodus chapter forty. So go ahead and uh, pull up a comfortable chair, something warm to drink, and uh, an open op- open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 40 or your Bible app. And we're just going to look at really five verses today. Five verses. Verses 34 through 38. And it's going to go by pretty quick, but there's actually still so much to talk about uh, in this section. Uh, let's Let's take a look. Starting from verse 34. Then the Lord covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Throughout all their journeys, whenever the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the people of Israel would set out. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they did not set out till the day that it was taken up. For the cloud of the Lord was on the tabernacle by day, and the fire and fire was in it by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel throughout all their journeys. So it's pretty straightforward what is being talked about here, but let me share with you some of my notes, some of the things that I'm seeing, uh, at least through through my my uh, cursory study of of this uh, passage. Uh, verse, verses thirty four may actually be linked to verse thirty three, the the previous section, um, where Moses had essentially finished assembling everything, and. Uh, in some of our uh, Bible translations, or the way it's listed out syntactically, it breaks up 34 as its own new paragraph. But uh, what if they were all linked together? What if the uh, Masoretic text, which a lot of a lot of these are derived from, uh, may not have intended a, a a break, a paragraph break? What that means is, as soon as Moses completed the assembly of all the constructed furniture and the constructed uh, utensils and all the different uh, boundaries and walls, upon finishing assembly, that's when the Lord descended down upon the tent of meeting. And that would have been huge, right? Uh, it's not that it was assembled and then at, at a later time the Lord then decided to join. No, it's more of now the Lord uh, has entered into this place. It, If anything, it would show that the Lord truly desires to be amongst his people. And as soon as it was done, the Lord came in and effectively took ownership of the house. 
Moses was not able to enter into the presence of God, into the tent of meeting, because think of it this way. It's like the analogy of a construction worker. He doesn't own the house. He is merely the one who uh, put the uh, put the foundation down, uh, erected all, all the walls, uh, completed the construction, but it is the owner that actually does the inhabiting of the house. And so Moses, likewise, uh, cannot enter into the tent of meeting because the Lord now inhabits that space. His full glory is now found inside that tabernacle, inside of the tent of meeting. What we also see here is a clear sign that the Lord wants to be with his people, uh, not just in the midst of them, but also in leading them. So when the nation stops, it's because the cloud is now descended upon the tent of meeting. But when the cloud or the pillar of fire is lifted and is uh, probably blazing the way uh, ahead of them, that's when the nation knows it's time to move. It's time to gather up all your things, all your belongings, and let's uh, make our journey forward. And and once again, the uh, the amazing thing about all of this is that the Lord is among the people. During the day, it is um, a, a cloud. During the night, it is a pillar of fire, much like what we saw in uh, the first half of Exodus, uh, when the nation of Israel was led out of Egypt. The great thing about all this, and I, I, I probably say that a lot uh, about this particular passage, one of the great things about all of this that I'm seeing is that this closeness that the Lord has with the people this uh, presence that he has amongst uh, the nation of Israel, right in the middle of uh, of the encampment. It is actually just a, a mere shadow of that closeness that uh, the believers of the New Testament are able to have through Jesus Christ. I mean, here you have God, in a sense, dwelling amongst the nation. But if we look at uh, what is spoken of God in the New Testament, we are his temple. God now dwells inside of us uh, through the Holy Spirit. What, what, a, what a revelation that is. His glory is found amongst his believers, amongst his people. And that's really my big takeaway out of all this. If I were to kind of summarize uh my, my big conclusion, it is this, the Lord's glory is found among his people. Today, that glory is really uh, found dwelling inside of us. Those who have confessed Jesus as Lord and Savior, um, uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit uh, is, is active and alive. What we see here in, in this final section of Exodus is God is dwelling amongst the, the nation, right in the middle of the encampment. That's where his glory is found. And the more we progress in this story of, of humanity, we will eventually dwell in him, dwell in the presence of God. Um, and we see that in the book of Revelation. But for, for the New Testament context, the Holy Spirit dwells in us and in, in the believers. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this time together. Uh, don't forget to like, uh, share, subscribe. Uh, let's do what we can to really promote God's word uh, into the live, uh, excuse me, the YouTube streams, uh, YouTube feeds of the people all around us, really. And and it really is all about God's word, God's love letter to to his people. Um, I want to uh, encourage you all to pray for your church's events. Uh, for my church, we have uh, praise and prayer night coming up at the end of the week, as well as a women's ministry luau fellowship. Uh, it's going to be a great time to gather together corporately, just as the nation of Israel have been, uh, as we've been reading and 
to experience God in their midst. Let's pray that in each of these events, there will be opportunities for us to experience uh, that closeness to God once again. And in fact, all the days of our lives. All right, with that, uh, let's get ready for Worship Wednesday tomorrow. It's going to be a great opportunity to once again learn what are some of the differences between praise and worship. Is there a difference? Uh, Tomorrow, I'm going to see if we could uh, dis- make that distinction through the ancient Hebrew, and let's see let's see what the Lord uh, says to us about praise and worship. All right, until then, God bless you guys. Have a great day, and continue to pray for one another. And I will see you all tomorrow morning. Take care.